There are these commonalities, these pieces of life wisdom that if you interact with enough people who are happy in what they do, that they're successful in what they do, you're going to find these commonalities, something that I finally learned and adopted in my life as well, which is it's okay to fail. Just don't make the same mistake twice. I feel like it's always about a decision. You have to decide to feel good as soon as possible and to work for it. And then you yeah. can do all kinds of things like taking an, an ice bath. You cannot feel terrible because you're just busy with surviving, for example. Happiness just happens inside your head you don't need much more than your head vibration is very important especially nowadays where like the world is under pressure i need to stay in a positive vibration i need to stay in a good mood and so i got very creative with ways to keep my positive spirit basically and one of it is to see everything and everyone as a teacher allow yourself to ask the question what have i learned from this experience as opposed mm. to just sort of shutting the door on it and saying well that didn't work out but i remember i was in taiwan i was doing a media event there and I was doing book signings afterwards and a, a young girl, probably 10 years old or so, came up and she wanted a copy of Safari des Lebens in Life Safari in English signed. When she handed me the book, she had just one hand. She didn't have a second mm. arm. Here she was asking me for advice about being courageous. And I just thought every day you're more courageous than I probably had to be ever in my life. As a serial entrepreneur, I'm always trying to evolve. Having great conversations with other high performers is one of the best ways to grow, not only in business, but also in spirit, health, and relationships. This is Svencast. Listen, grow, repeat. One thing you mentioned that's very interesting for me that said uh, you, you were talking about that inner calling. You had that yourself because you used to be, like back in the day, you used to be a management consult consultant yeah. and then. You, you changed your whole career. Like, how did yeah. that happen? And how did you, what, what kind of calling did you experience there? Yeah, so I, I had a very interesting sort of story in that regard. Um, my dream was to be a pilot um, when I was in high school. I didn't really know what I wanted to be, who I wanted to be, what type of career I wanted to pursue. And so um, I, I just decided that at some point I saw the movie Top Gun and I was like, I want to be a pilot. <laughs> I, I, that looks so amazing to push yourself. And it wasn't that I wanted to be a pilot and, and fly stuff that blew people up. It wasn't that at all. It was that I wanted to push myself competitively uh, against a machine of amazing capabilities against other people. And uh, so I decided I wanted to be a pilot. But interestingly enough, Sven, the underlying reason even far greater than that was that I wanted to go travel the world. I wanted to go experience all that the world had to offer. And through a strange series of circumstances, which is kind of a long story that I won't necessarily tell all the details of, but I had spent my entire life savings from the time that I was 12 years old until I was 22 on this dream, only to have it taken away because of a medical condition I had no idea I had and which only impacts you if you want to be a pilot or an astronaut. So like the odds of that are <laughs> unbelievable. Um, but if it hadn't been for that, I wouldn't have gotten into management consulting. If I hadn't gotten into management consulting, I wouldn't have understood how to negotiate deals, how to read through contracts, uh, how to structure a business. And without that information, I couldn't be the author that I am now. Because so many times you see someone who's a creative, they can come up with great content, but people take advantage of them in the contract phase, uh, or they just don't know how to they don't know how to do well in an interview. And, and so it's interesting how life was sort of guiding me along this path where I was able to pick something up along the way. And I think the big takeaway there, and I'd love to hear your perspective on this as it relates to your story, is allow yourself to ask the question, what have I learned from this experience? As opposed mm. to just sort of shutting the door on it and saying, well, that didn't work out. See, yes, I. this is like how I, how I approach, like I personally approach everything with that, question so i i just see everyone and everything as a coach especially the bad things that happen to me mm. like you know when i have like uh, when i've made a bad deal when i like failed with a business partnership or when i just did you know when i just did something stupid like really <laughs> stupid then i always I, i just see it as like a teacher And I see the thing in front of sitting in front of me, and then exactly it's repeating to me like, "What? What did you just learn? You learned that." And and so for me, it's very very important to not make the same mistake twice. 
yeah and to to really learn from that and yeah and, and how did you learn that did it suddenly come to you one day or did someone teach you that when you were younger? It was just out of like, I, I, I mean, I, I'm a creative guy. I'm that creative guy that you just described. Uh, I'm the creative guy who, who learned to read contracts and, and think about deals in, in a way that makes sense. And I, I figured out a way to, and I'm a sales guy as well. I, I love sales and marketing. So I have to, you okay. know, if, so I, I felt like in some situations I felt a lot of pain and uh, then I somehow figured out to, like, how can I frame this? So it, it has a positive impact on me instead of like just bringing me down all the time because okay. I, I think, I think vibration is very, um, very important, especially nowadays where like the world is under pressure Um. I need to stay in a positive vibration. I need to stay in a good mood. And so yeah. I so I got very creative in, with ways to to keep my positive spirit, basically. And one of one of it is to see everything and everyone as a teacher, especially like sometimes it's fun and enjoyment, and the yeah. rest is uh, a teacher, basically. And then and even like business competition, I just see them as a business coach, like, hey, this is a coach and the coach is pointing out my weaknesses. The coach, like I, I also mm. do martial arts. And one thing okay. a coach does is like, Oh, uh, you're not protected. You're not protected here. So boom, then you, you get a <laughs> <laughs> immediate feedback, right? Yeah. You know, instantly. Yeah. Oh, that's where I wasn't protected. Yeah, exactly. So, and the coach is there to push you and to, you know, bring the best out of you and, and then the whole process and I still can make a living. So, it's it's fine to me. So, so I I see like the whole, I see the whole, my whole life is very very sporty, you know. I see everything as a sport, and be it spirituality, be it finding your purpose and and pursuing it, and uh, bad things that happen to you. Then you have coaches along the way, and yeah. But it, it's it's how I try not to feel too much pain. I love that. And it's interesting to me because I, so we were talking before, what if someone says something similar to what you're saying? And uh, I was mentioning, I think there are these commonalities, these pieces of life wisdom that if you interact with enough people who are happy in what they do, that they're successful in what they do, you're going to find these commonalities. And so it's really intriguing to me. Uh, you used an expression that's almost identical to something that I finally learned and adopted in my life as well, which is uh, it's okay to fail. Just don't make the same mistake twice. Yeah. And so I, I really, I'm right there with you. I don't mind having something go wrong, but I refuse to not learn from it. Um, and I've noticed in the pattern of depending on somebody's life story and their life situation, that can be a real challenge for people that they will make a mistake and they will either pretend they didn't make a mistake because they don't want to feel bad about themselves uh, or they will spend hours just constantly going back and reliving the mistake mm. uh, or they just, they don't learn from it and they make the same mistake again. And I'm, I'm sure I've been a participant in that story at some point in my life for all three of those, but man, oh man, that is not the path to victory. It really isn't. Yeah. I, I feel like it's always about a decision. Like for example, um, you know, for example, when I, when everything is locked down, for example, then I feel mm -hmm. not good. Like no matter how successful I am or whatever, how, yeah, I, I just don't feel good about it, but I yeah. made it a point to decide to feel good. So I, so this is my goal. So what can I do to feel good now? So I, I start thinking about it in a different way and how you feel as crazy as, as this might sound, is, is a decision in my yeah. experience. It's a decision. So you have to decide, no, even if I feel terrible now, I decide to feel good as soon as possible and to work for it. And then you yeah. can do all kinds of things like taking an, an ice bath. You cannot feel terrible uh, while being in, in, in an ice bath because you're just busy with surviving, for example, <laughs> or, you know, it's just not, it's just not possible to be deep, to be this, depressed while you're freezing right. like in right. an ice bath for example so so well, in music too, you, you yeah. can put on a particular song that shifts your state in a second and yeah. 
by default your state shifts. Um, but I, I love that. I, I, so again, I use a different technique, but I arrive at a, some, a somewhat similar destination. Uh, I know that we're both travelers. And yeah. so one of the things I often reflect on is how fortunate I am that I happen to be born through no choice of my own in the place that I was and the gifts that I get from that. Um, because as I travel the world, I see people who are wonderful people. Um, they're very hardworking. They're very giving. And they just happen to be born in a place where the hurdles in front of them are a hundred times bigger than the ones yes, that I was yes. born in front of. And so I, I, when I think about that in my, when I'm in my own little pity party of something's gone wrong, I think about people that I've met and it makes me almost embarrassed that I have this, this pity party going on because I don't have anywhere near the obstacle that they have. Um, and it's funny that people you think about, I remember I was in Taiwan, I was doing a media event there. And I was doing book signings afterwards and a, a young girl, probably 10 years old or so came up and she wanted a copy of Safari des Liebens in Life Safari in English signed. And uh, when she handed me the book, she had just one hand. She didn't have a second mm -hmm. arm. And she was here. She was asking me for advice about being courageous. And I just thought, my gosh, kid, like every day you're more courageous than I've probably had to be ever in my life. Yes, it's it's amazing how how like it sounds crazy, but you can really adopt to a lot of crazy things. You know, like I I found I see quite often that people who have who are, for example disabled in any way, shape, or form that they they they're still quite happy and they really mm -hmm. seem quite happy. And it's like the human mind is really able to adapt with situations. And if you think logically about it, like if happiness just happens inside your head, you don't need much more than your head. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, so I'll give you a great tip. This is one that uh, I created a bunch of years ago. Uh, it was tied into my life when I was a management consultant. And this is the one that I go back to very often. And I, I love it because it's super goofy and it works every time, which is to have your laugh list ready. And so come up with three things that every time you think of it, every time you see it, it just makes you laugh. Like it's it's an absolute can't miss <laughs> victory. And these days it's so easy because you can take videos from YouTube and bookmark them, or you can have it stored directly on your phone. It can be a time with your friend. It can be a line from a movie, it can, anything. But it, this is such an effective yeah. technique about shifting your state. And uh, we, we used to do this in, uh, in consulting. Yeah. Uh, when we were having a really hard day, it'd be 11 o'clock at night. The client's unhappy about something. It's you know Thursday night and you're like, well, we're going to have to work all weekends, whatever. And there was this one stupid song video that one of my buddies had that it's like very sappy. And then it ends with, and you are my friend. And so in the worst of the worst depressing moments, this dude would play it. And just the start of the sound of the music, Sven, like all of us would start laughing. It was just an incredible <laughs> mood shifter. And all of us have the chance to add that into our life. Just what are your three yes. go-to things that are going to make you laugh every time? And that's your life list. That, yeah, that that's very cool. For me, it's for example, cat videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like yeah. what what an unprecedented time in human history, right? Like if you don't have one, yeah. get on Google and type uh, go down YouTube and type in funny videos. You're gonna find something that connects with yeah. you. Yeah. Um I think um yeah, es especially in, in these times you have like this the, like we're talking about lockdown times we have this chance of really looking inwards and, and, you know, not, not being so much because we used to be very distracted with anything like outside of ourselves, but a chance that we have next to, of course, you know, watching funny videos is we can, we, we can like see this as like, Oh, this is an unexpected uh, time gift, so to speak. And we yeah. can look inwards and we can find out about our spirits and we can, we can learn that basically, basically you don't, of course, you want to survive and you need a bed and, and some food and shelter, et cetera, and water. But, but basically you don't need anyone or anything else than yourself to be, to be happy and, and to feel good because you, you have to create it in your own, in, in your own self. And you have to focus on it and you have to work on it. It's, it's not like just something that comes to you. It's like you really have to work on it. 
And I think this is like another chance that we have, like to raise the yeah. spirit as of humanity. I, I totally agree. The, the commute time alone, you know, most people, they would get in their car or get on a train or something. They would take time to get from where they were at home to their work. And then they'd have to do the same thing in a reverse. And so all of that time has been free time gifted back to yeah. people because they're not doing that. And the question is, what's that time being used on? Are yes. we allowing ourselves to ask, wow, like, what do I, when this situation ends and I have complete freedom to travel again or to engage in whatever activities I want, what are what I call your big five for life? What are the five things I most want to do, see, or experience in my life? And it would be a travesty, I feel, to walk out of this situation and not have given that some thought, not have hired a coach, not have taken a course, not have allowed yourself the introspective moments of contemplative thought to get clear on those questions, not only so that you can start getting smart about them now during this extra time that we've got, but so that when this situation is is over with, that you're 100% ready to immerse yourself in that. Yeah, I... I, I remember thinking at the beginning of this, I was doing a, a PSA, a public service announcement about inspiring, you know, trying to tell people wear masks and, and that mm. kind of stuff. And I remember thinking to myself, Sven, that if we walk out of this situation, the exact same person we, we were when we walked in, like that'll be, that'll have been a loss. Like, it's really yes. important yeah. to have learned something, to have grown in some way from this. Um, and I, I hope that's the case for, for everybody who's out there. Yes. I. It's it's again a decision. Like uh, mm -hmm. what I would like one of the messages I would like to bring across in this podcast is like I want to inspire people to 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 a learn that your happiness and your well being is ultimately your decision. That's why, by the way, I also think people should should decide about what they take into their bodies or not. It's it has to be a decision because it it the the there's never a quick fix from the outside. Mm. Like there, there can be like some stepping stone on the outside or some, some tool that you can use from the outside. Um, but, but there is no quick fix from the outside that like, for example, a pill or an injection won't, um, won't, it uh, won't work as well as living a healthy lifestyle. If you don't live a health, healthy lifestyle, then you can die basically without an infection of something you you will you will uh, uh, die from your own lifestyle so what you really need is you need to make that decision again a it's a decision and you can need to make that decision over and over again to become better to become healthier to become happier no matter what happens on the outside and really work for it and do everything that you need to do And um, so what's interesting yeah. about that to me is that if you so and I think back to my own life and again, in my early 20s, especially early to mid 20s, that if you are living a life where you don't enjoy your job and you don't have a sense of what would make you happy, then there's no real motivation to do these things you're talking about. That part of the part of the inspiration for being healthier for looking at the things that we eat and saying, wait, how do I feel after I eat that? Do I feel just lethargic or do I feel super energized in a good sort of way? Do I feel like I've got the kind of enthusiasm that I could go walk for two miles or four kilometers or whatever? If I don't have a motivation to be healthier, then I just get less and less healthy. And this goes back again to the big fire for life to me. There's no training, at least it, there wasn't in my life. There was no training that said, hey, This great adventure of life only lasts so long. And the only way you're going to get to go do, see, and experience the things you want to go do, see, and experience is if you pick them and yeah. that you get to pick them and you get to chart your own course on this and you get to be smart about them and learn about them. But it's only dependent, as you mentioned, on you as an individual saying for yourself, this is what would make me happy. This is what would make me fulfilled. And here are the steps to get there, including, as you were just mentioning, like, This is the reason that I look at what I eat and I choose to eat healthier because then I can go climb Mount Kilimanjaro or <laughs> then I can go, you know, scuba dive the Great Barrier Reef without yeah. sort of the payoff. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, I don't, who cares? You know? Yeah. Yeah. You, you need like, because there's always a sacrifice, right? you know, yeah. like yeah. You, you can have your big five. I mean, in this case, it's goals. 
uh, like for the listeners. Um, but there's always a sac sacrifice that comes with it. Like if you want to win Mr. Olympia, then uh, you have, <laughs> you have to train a lot and, and eat a yeah, lot. Yeah, you, know, you wait. There's not just a pill I can take to get those kind of muscles. Come on, Sven. Yeah, Damn. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it, it's with think, everything. Yeah, and the the amazing thing, and again, this is something that took me years and years to learn, was that I think I was so locked in on what the final destination was that I didn't realize so much of the joy in life is the process of overcoming the obstacle. So using Mr. Olympia yeah. as an example, if you started off and you were, you know, in my case, six, six foot tall, six one and 150 pounds, and I wanted to get to be 220 and super, super strong, mm. then part of the joy of the experience is overcoming the obstacles. Because when I arrive at the other side of that, I've grown tremendously, not just physically, but I've grown mentally. I've gotten more self-confidence. And so that's that's the reason I think in life that it's not just about taking the one magic pill. Then it would just be an instant payoff, but we'd have missed the whole value of learning along the way and gaining our self-confidence and learning that we were more capable than we thought we were capable and dealing with challenges and overcoming those challenges. That to me is the game. And if we yes. allow ourselves to embrace the game, which is tying back to what we talked about earlier, accept failure as part of that adventure. You're not going to be 100% on point, but you're going to learn from the failures and move on. Then you log what I think is the most important currency, which is minutes of life in alignment with the life that you want to live. That, I think, is winning the ultimate game. Yeah, th th that's very interesting. Um, and you, you have to have this higher calling. And, and the challenge with that is, especially nowadays, where we have all these media around, us uh, trying to sell us stuff so basically suggesting oh you're not happy so therefore you need to buy xyz oh buy a nicer car buy these clothes you know like etc cetera, etc cetera. so how how can you really like really find out what you're really about and what your inner calling is yeah uh, and and not fall for like some kind of external marketing destruction. Uh, distraction, you're, you're, sorry, not dis distractions, but distraction. Yeah, no, your, your question is 100% on point. And <clears throat> the example that I would use is imagine if someone walked up to your door and said, hey, Sven, great news. The plane is leaving in two hours, so pack your bags. Well, I don't know. Are you going to the Caribbean to go scuba diving and snorkeling? Are you going to the mountains to go skiing? Are you going to go trekking in the forest somewhere? Like you wouldn't know what to pack unless you knew what the destination was and what you were going yeah. to be doing there. And that's what we get to choose. That's again tying it back into the same verbiage. That's your big five for life. And when you know those things, It makes it, and so let's say, you know, the place you're going to travel wise is you're going down to the Caribbean and you're going to be scuba diving and snorkeling for a week and maybe doing a little fishing for mahi mahi. And so now when someone is trying to sell you, uh, you know, hiking boots uh, for the great winter season, you're like, I don't need that. Thank you very much. I'm good. I'm going someplace where that's not necessary. Uh, when someone is trying to sell you a course about how to become a master violinist and you're like, no, actually I'm going snorkeling and scuba, di scuba diving. So thanks a lot. Don't need that right now. So this awareness about where you want your life to go has been for me, the greatest catalyst that takes stress so much out of our lives because now we don't get distracted by that stuff. We don't get pulled in a thousand different directions. It's much more of a very binary decision-making process. I'm going this direction to that destination because I want to do these things. And this thing you're offering, it either helps me in that regard or it doesn't. If it does, yes, maybe yes. I give it some consideration. If it doesn't, it's a no. Yes. Um, still, that's easier said than done because, you know, let's assume you, you have kids and you don't like your job. You would love to be some someone else basically you would like you would love to live for example in a foreign country or you would have a whole different job but still like you have to feed the family etc and you might want to become an entrepreneur for example but 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 you need that salary you have to pay off your mortgage and your car etc etc what what do you tell those people i would say two things one is that The, the more we have examples of people who have done, seen, and experienced what we want to do, see, and experience, the easier it gets for us to see that as a potential reality in our lives. 
in part because the brain doesn't want to change. The brain wants to do the same thing today it did yesterday. And so it's going to just sort of lock in on our tasks, activities, thought processes that we did yesterday and mimic those every day thereafter. However, if you have a role model of someone who is doing this thing that you want to be doing, as you said, taking my entire family, moving to a foreign country and getting a job in this particular industry. When I know two or three people who have done that and I've had a chance to learn their stories and see what the process was, now it's like having a map. And I may not know how to get from point A to point B in the beginning, but with a map, I can definitely get there. And using your sports analogy before, which I love because I'm a big athlete myself. Okay. So if I've got the map and I can see the pathway, and then maybe for myself, I decide I also want to hire a coach. So I want a coach who can guide me as I'm getting from point A to point B. Or maybe I decide that I want to, the joy for me is learning it as I go. And so I can see the map and I know where I'm going to go. And I want to get super smart about all the processes to get me from one spot to another. It's when we don't have examples of people who have done, seen, or experienced it. That to me is where the brain is just like too big, too much, mm. have no idea where to go. And so then we just default to the same behavior we did yesterday. Um, but again, this goes back to the amazing time in history where we live, the yin and yang of everything. The technology can be the world's biggest distraction, if you yeah. like be. But to the contrary, the, the technology can be the world's greatest connector of finding these people who have done, seen, and experienced what you want to do, seen, and experience, if we use it that way. In the following episode of Svencast, Sometimes we can be so stuck in our own heads that we think, well, this is, the, this is the way it is. This is the way things work. But when you open up your challenge to four or five other smart people, it's amazing how they will see things that we have blinders on. We just can't see it, but they're going to see those opportunities. So one of the things I often recommend is to have what's called an MMB session, a make me better session. You invite seven people over to your house and then you say, listen, I want to tell you about my personal big five for life. Here's what they are. Here's the obstacle that I see in front of me. What ideas do you have? If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button and never miss an episode of Svencast again.